Whoa, it's Wolsey. Welcome back to the Geometry Dash building video. Today, I am going to be recreating a background that I did from a stream yesterday that was a bit of a mess. The plan for that stream was to kick off my brand new channel, Wolsey VODs, that I can show you right now. If I just go on my display cab, I've made this channel. I'll link it in the description down below. It will stay there permanently. It's nice and purple because, you know, Twitch and stuff. And I think I'm going to make this video itself the first upload to Wolsey VODs. Just an uncut building video so you can get the idea of, you know, what it's going to be like on that channel. Because I know a lot of you wanted to actually see uncut building videos and stuff. So I'm going to stream more and then upload the streams to that channel uncut. So you can see exactly what's happening. You can follow through step by step. Yesterday, I made this part in a level. I call it Gamering. It was supposed to be a demon level in a day. There was meant to be much more than this done but I only got the first part done. So we have this like cool little circle effect in the background that I just want to explain for a video for Wolsey VODs because I think it's pretty cool. Obviously, this is a bit more advanced than what I'm going to be showing. There's a lot of uh, tampering with the environment. I put glow and stuff above the level, as you can see. If I just go on the editor right here, you can see it's kind of shaded and there's like blocks in front of it and stuff like that. I'm just going to show you how to make the actual circle effect itself where the colors inside the circle change when they overlap. I think it's a super cool effect. It's super easy to make. And to prove my point, I'm going to make it in like five minutes or so, something like that. I'm going to have a timer on screen. This is probably the perfect time for me to talk about uh, the stream overlay that I've got set up. I have a timer down there. You can see it's ticking away. I can like reset it and stuff. Um, and also, if I send stuff in the chat, you'll see it in the bottom corner now. I mean, it's kind of ugly with the link controls being there, but I have them turned off most of the time. So you can see right there, it just slides in the bottom corner. I think it's going to be neat. I'm coming off a of vacation and I'm going to be streaming a lot more. I have a stream playlist that's just playing this music like live. This isn't edited in. This is literally just from a stream playlist. I mean, Spotify is kind of broken. It puts in the wrong pictures for the wrong games, but you know, you get the idea. It's pretty basic at the moment. I'm going to be adding more to it as we go on. But yeah, I'm basically just going to explain how I made that effect with such simple uh, uses. So let me just turn on this timer and we'll get going. Just so you can see how long this is really taking. Um, so it literally just involves semicircles. They're not even semicircles. They're quarter circles like this with outlines above on a new editor layer and then a copy of the same circle again. But before I do that, I'm going to set this to B4, and I'm also going to set it to black like so, which I always put on color channel 9. I'm going to copy paste this, put it on B3, and once I add blending to it, it will just get shoved all the way down the bottom of B3. So I can take this outline, put it on the same black, and put it on B3, and we should just have a red circle right here. Awesome. I'm going to scale this up collectively to four times using scale hacks, the slide limit in mega hack V7 right there. Um... And I'm just going to link it together, I think. But most of the time, I'm going to keep link controls disabled just because it's a lot smoother for me to actually edit this level. Okay, so I'm going to make another circle next to it. Before I do that, let me just show you the overlap. It's just red and red, right? But if I change... Hold on. If I move this back and I actually change the red right here. This is nine. We need one. If I change the red slightly to be more desaturated and decrease the opacity, you can see the overlap right there is slightly brighter and this will really help once I change the hue of it. So I'm really excited to get into this and show you how this is made. But first off, I have made a slight error in the way that I have not changed the layer of this blending at all. Yeah, you see, this is such a mess. It's not layered properly whatsoever. Um, let me just fix this real quick. This is the joy of the VODs channel. You won't see this on the main upload. Uh, what am I trying to do here? I'm just trying to swap these out. All right. Let me put this on a different editor layer now. I completely forgot to do that at first. Okay, so we have the circle, we have the blending, and we have the outline right there. So I'm going to change the right circle and its hue to 120. Now, hue, you can think of it from 0 to 360. Those are both the same. Hue 0 and hue 360 are both the same. Uh, I'm going to have three circles, so I need three incremented hues that are equally distanced apart, and that will be 0, 120, and 240. So we have 120 here. The maximum bound is actually 180. You see, I kind of moved the slider past that. 180 and negative 180 are the same as far as GD is concerned. So what I'm going to do is copy this circle again, and I'm going to move it plus 60 to 
plus 180, and then plus 60 again, so it goes back around to 120. So now we have three equally spaced hues that are red, green, and blue, and once I overlap these circles together, like so, let me just move this down a little bit more, we have a really cool color overlap here, which shows pink in between this, we have light blue here, and we have yellow in between the green, which is I don't know, I think it's super cool. And what, what else you can do with this is select the black and it will collectively like tint everything, even with color too. Like I can make it red, I can make it blue, I can make a cool pulse like this. I think this is one of the sickest things you can possibly do. Like just color wise, like it's so beautiful. You get a collective tint on everything. It stays the same. So I'm gonna be using this to make a background, which is why I've linked the circles together. Cause now I can move the blue and the green out the way and just focus on reds for now, making this a ship section. Uh, let me just put a ship portal underneath the level so you can see the borders. I'm gonna set out this red circle at different shapes and sizes collectively. Wow, I forgot to turn on the scale hack again. Okay, so let me just change the size of the circle over and over again like so. So we have like a really interesting pattern here. It is gonna be slightly copy pasted just because I'm trying to play safe for time. Also, what is it? No, I thought the outlines were like kind of broken for a second. It kind of looks like this side is thicker than the other side, but that's just the GD uh, zoom, like playing tricks on me. Like it's not like that, don't worry. Um, yeah, sometimes you get a really weird view on stuff with the GD editor. Sometimes it doesn't like load stuff in properly. Okay. So I'm just gonna take these circles and copy paste and flip them like so and add them to a group, which is gonna be one for now, I guess. Uh, that can be the collective moving group actually. So what I'm gonna do is place a move trigger straight away that just locks this to the X axis right off the bat. And I'm gonna move these circles towards me as well so we can just get straight into this action because the player has like 15 blocks in front of them and about five behind, roughly, if we had to say. Some screens are wider than others. I'm just gonna move these circles towards me. So as soon as I play, I have all of these circles in my peripheral right here. So it's all around me. And then I'm gonna set up another movement for the second group that we added, ironically, two. Uh, let's move this 15 seconds and it's just gonna move towards the player like 40 blocks or so, just like this. So there's a bit of like, different movement you know it's not just staying with me it's moving towards me slowly so then I am going to take the green circle and repeat the process now obviously I said this is gonna take five minutes it's taking a little bit more but I am commentating I think I could probably speed build this in about three minutes if I really tried so let me just add the consistent moving group one and the extra group three that I just added uh, which is gonna be the next movement. We just need to copy paste these now. And you can see they're going yellow whenever this circle overlaps. It's so cool. Like I made this on a plane at home and I was just really excited to continue the like the video and stuff. Oh boy. Uh, yeah, I haven't changed the layer of these at all. So I'm just gonna have to work with like what I've got literally. I'm just gonna have to keep copy pasting this. What I should have done is put the colors on different layers so I could more easily select them individually, but I guess this is okay. Like, it's not gonna be a problem overall. Um, Cause I've already added the different group to them. Okay, so all I need to do is just keep on copy pasting like so, and we can make three move a little bit less. Where's the move trigger? I put it all the way on the left, here we go. Three is gonna move like 250, I guess. So there's gonna be a slight difference and the overlap is gonna be showcased a lot better. And what I might do is make some sort of movement vertically as well as horizontally, just because, you know, it's nice to have that. Uh, but that can come later. I'm just gonna finish off the colors that I have for now, because why not? Okay, so I need to add one and the next group four, and we'll just continue with what we've been doing. Just scaling up and down and moving it around. You can create some really cool depth with backgrounds like these. I mean, all of these circles are technically on the same layer, so I can't really put glow and like differentiate the different layers to them, right? But you can create some really interesting patterns with the speed that they move in and like maybe even rotating them around a point. I don't know, I just think it's a cool idea. Let's just keep going. We're not gonna move it as far out as the red and green because it doesn't need to move as far. The blue's gonna move a lot less just so we have that little, uh, 
I guess you can call it a parallax effect when certain circles move further than others. So if I just press play now, we have all of our circles moving and they're creating different overlaps, which is sick. I really like this. Okay. Now all I need to do is set out some extra movements. I'm going to say like, I don't know, two seconds move time, easing out. And we don't need to think about the X. We've already got X movements. We can just focus on the Y. Uh, and I'm going to move this to the end of the duration line, which you can set up in the extra editor options right here, the duration lines. I am going to set it the opposite direction, but double. And I'm going to move it like seven blocks in front of the ending. I don't know. It's just a value I chose. There's no real reason for using seven. You can use anything. It's just so the next movement starts before the previous one is finished, right? So I'm just going to continue this process. That should be enough, honestly. Uh, no, we can we can copy it further just because it's going to be on the screen for quite a while. Um, a boom. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is select the leftmost trigger and I'm going to make this the group parent. And I'm going to select the rest of the move triggers, copy paste, move them up just so I can like differentiate between them and scale down a bit. So we're going to go to 0.75 scale. That should be enough. And I'm going to change the move time to 1.5 just so it's not as long and clunky. I forgot to change the group number in there actually. What I'm trying to do is basically make three move quicker or like more frequently than two and four can be the most frequent right here like so okay sweet so now we should have this like kind of wobbly movement where the circles are moving at different speeds the easing is atrocious i'm not gonna lie i should probably fix that just by increasing the move times on each set i'm gonna make it two 2.5 and i think three for the bottom just to give it a bit of variation there. That was really clunky. Like there's a lot of different stuff you can apply to movements to make it like more fluid. I'm just going the most basic route and using ease in out. Here we go. This feels a lot better, I think. Neat. Okay, so this is really harsh, obviously. If you put blocks in front, it's gonna be pretty ugly, I think. Let me set the ground to black and black. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up pulses for the black color channel, which I made number nine. It's gonna have a short fade in time and a slightly longer fade out time. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the RGB slider right here to get like a nice color that's like pretty interesting to me uh, for a pulse. So I can, I can figure this out super easily. Let me just go ahead and set that up. I'll just use different hues of the same exact placement on the color wheel, just cause it's easier for me to work out. Um, there's some ugly colors, obviously. This is just a, oh, I clicked off the game. Uh, this is an easy demonstration just to show you how this effect works and stuff and how you can like tin it. I'm also gonna make the background white, so prepare your eyes for some uh, bleeding. There we go. It looks a lot cleaner on white because the colors match a lot more easily. Okay, so that's kind of making it less harsh on the outlines. It's making it more interesting too. I mean, obviously this isn't synced to anything, but that's a simple background you can make. And something else, you can probably just stick on some like extra sized glow on the foreground just to make it a lot easier to uh, look at at the edges too. Just to blend it in a bit and make it a bit more interesting. So we have the movement one, we have T3 white glow. That's just gonna stick at the bottom like so. And we'll just do the same for the top. This is really lazily put together, but you know, you get what I mean. I wouldn't use that scale of glow because it's gonna be like super, um, super opaque. But we have our white glow at the bottom right now, just to kind of wash it out right there. And what I was doing in the level is placing like little beams that go in between. I'm gonna sort that out real quick. Where's my, uh, there we go. Little pillars like this. I'm gonna make this a new color channel just for speed. That's gonna be on 75% opacity. And I'm just gonna scale it up. So we have like a little bit of extra coverage that's gonna like wash out the circles at different times. And I'll probably add this to the movement group, honestly, number one. And we can just extend that across and move five towards the player, just like we did earlier. So number five is gonna move like 500, I guess. So now we have like a little washed out little beam that moves across and we have our circles that are changing in their color. That's gonna make sure everything's on don't fade and don't enter and we should be good to go. Nothing's transitioning on and off of the screen. That took us 12 minutes to record. I don't know, it's a pretty cool effect in my opinion. 
I don't know. I haven't really seen it done before, but maybe I'm just being like really ignorant. I obviously applied it to the gamering level right here. I think it looks pretty smooth. The transition on is kind of helping it stand out, but yeah, I think you can like really go hard with this if you have the right colors and you have like the right mindset going into it, making it sync and like play well, you know? But that's pretty much all I have to say. That is the cool circle effect that took me 12 minutes to make. I bet I can make it in like five minutes. I don't know. That's the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching this Geometry Dash building video. Thank you for watching on Woolsey VODs if you have done so. Hit the subscribe button on both channels. I'll be posting very frequently whenever I stream and edit stuff down. Check the links in the description. Leave a like and subscribe. And as the Woolsey on the screen says, ah, uh, wait, that says S. Uh, as subscribe.